Hey everybody, this is Sarah from Health by Sarah. It's been about nine weeks since my last video with you guys when I was 15 weeks pregnant. So now I'm 24 weeks pregnant and that marks six months. I can't believe it, but I'm in the second trimester now. It's feeling really great. I think the last time I shared my video with you guys, uh, I was just out of the first trimester and I was just getting over morning sickness and getting a little more energy. So right now I have a lot more energy. Um, I'm able to get so much more accomplished than I ever did before. Um, it just really hit me hard in the first trimester and I couldn't do anything. So I'm just so thankful right now and I'm trying to um, take advantage of that energy and motivation. It's its just only increased since then. Um, I'm not sure if it'll last forever. I don't think it will from what I've heard. Um, but the good news is, is that I have so much more energy and I don't have any more food aversions. Um, one other thing is that I really want to share these videos with you guys more often. And I think the best way for me to do that is to just make my videos shorter and to just share maybe a couple things each time and focus on those instead of sharing a bunch of information all at once. So today I want to talk about Doppler and ultrasounds and the potential adverse effects of them. As you guys know, I am making it my goal to make my pregnancy as natural as possible. And obviously, using Doppler and ultrasounds is not exactly natural. That doesn't mean I'm completely against it, though. It's just um, something that you should be cautious about. Anybody should be cautious about. And it's something that I've looked into quite a bit myself. Um, now, my husband and I have talked about this at length, like, even before I got pregnant. And... We had like complete opposite views. Um, I was like, I didn't want to get either one of them at all. And he was like, you need to get that because it could save the baby's life. And I could definitely see his point of view, of course. Um, but then I saw the argument that ultrasounds and, and the conclusions and these actual studies um, that have come out about ultrasounds, they say that it does not improve maternal outcomes. Um, or I, I, maybe any outcomes. Um, I have to look that up actually. But it, it definitely said that it doesn't improve maternal outcomes. So, or outcomes. So, uh, I was like, questioning everything that I learned because before I didn't think there was anything wrong with it and to just dive into some of the risks um, now Doppler is actually more risky than ultrasound which was surprising to me because if you've ever seen a Doppler ultrasound before it's just to listen to the baby's heartbeat and it's just this small little wand um, you can actually buy it online or get a prescription for it, which is something I would definitely not recommend anybody do. Um, if you're actually going to have listen to the baby's heartbeat, get a professional to do it who is trained to just get in and out. You don't want to spend any length of time exposing your baby to those ultrasound waves. Um, so the risks would include heating the tissues, cavitation, and acoustic streaming. Um, that's more, well, that's for both Doppler and for ultrasound, but as I said, Doppler is actually more risky because it causes more heating than a regular ultrasound. Ultrasound, um, the way it heats tissue, it, it actually doesn't heat it that high. It's between... Um, 1.8 to 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit and that's considered to be a safe uh, range of heating your tissue um, and you might know that pregnant women need to avoid saunas or 
steam rooms, uh, hot baths or hot tubs, hot showers even, like too hot of a shower, because it heats our tissues up and in turn would heat up the baby as well. So um, you, you just don't want to heat up your tissues too high. But a Doppler ultrasound will potentially raise... Um, Um, the temperature 2.5 to 10.4 degrees. So as you can see, that's quite a difference. Um, with It's only 2.7 at the highest with an ultrasound, but with a Doppler it goes up to 10.4 degrees and as low as 2.5 degrees. So that's, um, that's kind of risky, especially if they're holding it in one place for a longer period of time. And the difference is, is that Doppler ultrasound uses continuous waves instead of pulsed waves. So um, the continuous waves cause more heating than the pulsed waves. And some of the human studies suggest that the adverse effects could include premature ovulation, preterm labor, miscarriage, low birth weight, poor condition of birth, perinatal death, dyslexia, delayed speech development, and less right-handedness. Now, of course, there's really nothing wrong with being right-handed or left-handed, except um, this actually suggests if it's uh, the effect is making somebody left-handed due to the raising of the tissues, um, that could be because of brain damage. So that's really the issue with it. Um, so anyway, what, what happened with me is that I ended up agreeing with my husband that I would get an ultrasound um, for his peace of mind, really, because uh, we came to an agreement. He said, I'm not getting, I'm not asking you to do an ultrasound at every single appointment. I'm asking you to do just one to make sure that everything is going right. And I just thought that was pretty logical, especially based on his story. Um, he said that there was this baby back in the 1990s woman had had an ultrasound and they found that there was a tumor on the baby and they decided to operate um, in utero. I don't know exactly how old the baby was, but it was too young to survive outside of the womb at that time. So they did the surgery and the surgery was successful and the baby lived. So he uses that as his um, argument why we should check for um, everything's going well with the baby and um, I ended up just giving in a little bit because um, one thing ultrasound is less risky than Doppler and for our ultrasound I did it right at 18 weeks and typically in the second trimester they do in between 18 to 22 weeks and that's when they get a bunch of measurements of the baby and um, it was actually really nice to see our child and, um, we ended up not deciding, um, or actually we ended up deciding to wait to find out the sex of the baby because we just wanted to be surprised at the birth. So they looked at all other kinds of things, um, just the, the measurement of the organs or just the measurement of the baby itself, um, just all kinds of things they were looking for, and they said everything looked normal, so that was really comforting. And also, it was really cool to see all the kinds of detail you would see, because she was pointing out all the organs, um, the kidneys, the lungs, um, I think even the spleen, the heart, and what was cool about the heart was you could actually see the heart beating like this out of the chest. It was like nothing I'd 
ever seen before actually and it was like this little black line just going up and down and so you could actually see how fast the heart was beating um the other cool thing I thought was you could see every individual vertebrae and I was like I didn't know you could see all that detail on just the 2d ultrasound so and I actually um, in addition to the ultrasound I got the Doppler used on me a couple different times and thankfully the doctor and the midwife they got in and out like the second time the doctor was able to hear it within two seconds so I don't really think that did much damage but if I were to do it again I would probably wait until 20 weeks if the doctor was okay with that um, to try and listen with a fetoscope so this is the alternative to listening with Doppler ultrasound for the heartbeat. It looks just like a stethoscope, except the bottom part. There's actually two pieces, so this, this is what you recognize as a regular stethoscope. And then this tube connects to this metal piece right here. I'm not going to do it right now. And just so you know the right way, you you grip this with your hand and this part is what actually goes against your belly and my doctor used it the last time at 22 weeks and he was able to hear it but it just took him a little bit longer to find the heartbeat because um, it just doesn't magnify the sound as well as the Doppler does but I was completely fine with that and he finally found it uh, right around my belly button and he said with this fetoscope, you actually have to put it directly on the baby's chest in order to hear it. And it gets um, a little bit louder as you get later on in the pregnancy. So I think it'll be easier to find next time, hopefully. Um, but as I said before, I'm not completely against ultrasounds or Doppler. But I just, I think a lot of the times there be they're being used in excess and in non-medically needed situations. So I think if the doctor actually had legitimate concerns, um, like he wasn't able to hear the baby's heartbeat or he thought maybe there was potential, you lost the baby, had a miscarriage, then it might be a good idea to get a Doppler um, to see if you can listen or if they can't hear it, then they really need to go on with the ultrasound. So I think really we need to take these things on a case by case basis, but also we need to be cautious too and realize that um, they're being used in excess. So I'd love to hear what you guys think, um, what your experiences have been. So let me know in the comments. All right, and the next uh, doctor's appointment I will have is the glucola test so I'm definitely going to be talking to you guys about that in the future possibly the next video so let me know what your questions are and I can't wait to hear your comments see you next time